Hey, God bless you, family. King Jesus bless you. Uh, I hope this video is not shaking too much. Um, I had a comment the other day just stating there was a lot of shake, so sorry about that. Uh, guys, it uh, looks not terrible. <clears throat> Gotta keep my air running. It's been hot. I sometimes do these videos with it off, but then I'm sweating bullets and I can't think as well. <clears throat> All right, so. Per my video yesterday, we were looking at some different signs and wondering could yesterday be the day we uh, get get raptured, get caught away, go to glory, go home for the first time. It hasn't happened. You know, we're still going to watch. Uh, there is a special crown for those who love his appearing, who are looking for it, right? Um, I believe not everyone's going to get that, believers-wise. Those who aren't uh, thinking that, you know, today could be the day, who aren't looking for King Jesus... Um, you'll still get to glory and stuff, but I I don't think that crown would go to a person who's not loving his appearing, you know, looking for it, watching for it. Or, you know, maybe I'm way off and maybe uh, they'll be raptured even though they weren't looking for it. And they love the fact that they're raptured, so they still get it. I don't care. Give it to all of us. But um, it is my heart's desire, <clears throat> the way I've been rewired in Christ Jesus, to be interested in a Bible prophecy, looking for Jesus, looking for our Savior, just to see him. After what he did for us, you guys know my spirit. You have the same one. <clears throat> you want to see the Messiah too, right? Praise Jesus. So from end time headlines, GOP warning of national security threat is about Russia wanting nuclear weapon in space. So this is the headline uh, further about it uh, that, that I was sharing yesterday. There was that national security threat that came out yesterday. Well, further information is saying Russia wants to put a nuclear weapon in uh, space. <clears throat> I believe there's a limit that anybody can go into the, the heavens. I know from the book of Genesis, the Lord created a firmament. And um, and we also know from, uh, was it in Genesis, the Tower of Babel, they were trying to storm and, and come together and build that Tower of Babel and storm the heavens, uh, come against the one true God, make a name for themselves. The Lord scattered that scattered their plans, their languages, and the people. And now we see nothing new is under the sun. What shall be has been before. As we come to this time where the church shall be removed and tribulation shall come, it'll be the same thing. They will be given one mind, this uh, one world system, <clears throat> beast system being set up. So uh, praise God for God's word. We understand like when we see these things, they have been uh, before. So we can understand like nothing. we're not going to be fretful because we know, oh, this is just... A new iteration of what has been. All right, so those are the details on the security threat. <clears throat> That's going to be basically a Russia nuke uh, in the heavens as far as they can go. And it made me think, as some of you guys might be tracking where I'm going here, in Revelation 12, verse 7, and there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. <clears throat> For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. So there was war in heaven. This is what I what I immediately thought of when I heard of like trying to get weapons into the heavens. There was war in heaven. War on earth consists of bombs, you know, um, ammunition, guns, and such. Nuclear weapon in heaven. There was war in heaven. And you know, we also know from scripture that many times we've entertained angels unaware. They look like men. Angels in scripture always have appeared as men. Um, so we are among people. And have you ever met somebody and they do a good deed, they say a kind word, they encourage you, and then you might never see them again. Or maybe you do. <clears throat> Perhaps they are an angel on a mission to encourage us and to help us. Um, so by that line of thinking, you can also think there are, there are demons down here too that look like men. We know in Jesus' time, uh, demons were possessing people. Um, so that can be a way that we can see demons manifested as well. War 
in heaven. So could it be, you know, trying to put these nukes up in the sky and then there will be war. Now this is at a point in the tribulation, but we know the framework is getting built up and set up um, currently. Could this be a way for the, the evil demons that are possessing men on earth to do wicked things and the bidding of Satan to be preparing to fight against um, during the tribulation against the, the tribulation saints uh, Jacob, Israel the Jews and uh, the angels who will be helping uh, the tribulation saints and Israel because Michael is mentioned here by name and he is the, the archangel protector of Israel so could it be an angelic thing using conventional weapons like nuclear weapons um, I think certainly it could be um, so you guys pray the Holy Spirit and you read that Revelation 12 let me know um, what you think I would love to hear that popped up on my radar like relatively instantaneously so I'd love to hear what you guys think guys I want to send us off with some great encouragement from 1 Thessalonians 5 <coughs> excuse me <clears throat> a lot of times you hear me talking about 1 Thessalonians 4 which is the catching away as I was see, uh, searching the scriptures, and um, especially 1 Thessalonians, I came to chapter 5, and some uh, the latter part of that chapter hit me in just a few verses here. Starting at verse 16, rejoice evermore. So Paul is just kind of sending off the people here. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks. In everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit, despise not prophesying. Prove all things, hold fast to that which is good, abstain from all appearance of evil, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that called you, who also will do it. There's so much here. Brethren, pray for us. Greet all the brethren with a holy kiss. I charge you by the Lord that this epistle be read unto all the holy brethren. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. This is massive. I, don't, I won't say a ton about it. I, I believe you guys have, have heard it and felt it because uh, this is potent. And these are just quick little, you know, three, four sen uh, word sentences. Paul is just kind of bang, 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 hitting you with this truth. <laughs> Rejoice evermore. So we got to have that rejoice in all things. Uh, it's a biblical command. Paul teaches a lot about to rejoice in all things. Pray without ceasing. What does that mean? When I was a younger uh, believer, I was you know, trying to understand that now. <clears throat> I just think it means as you control your thoughts and your thinking, you always have the forefront of your mind uh, things of the Lord. And people you interact with, like the Holy Spirit will spur to action in your remembrance ways to pray. For example, real quick, I had a, a semi-truck driver come and drop off a pallet today. And we we're talking and... Um, he had mentioned how he was going through a divorce, and I said, oh, brother, you know, I told him I had gone through that also, and uh, was kind of basically saying that's how I came to faith on Jesus, through the hard times. I said, you know, I was just talking about that, and anyways, I told him, I'll, I'll pray for you, brother. Um, I said, I'll pray for you. He said, thank you. I said, you got it. So, uh, pray without ceasing the Holy Spirit, basically what I'm saying, will spur you to remembrance, to pray. That's kind of prayer without ceasing throughout the day. Holy Spirit will help you think of things that need it, and, and it just comes. So when you think, like, how am I going to do that? It's more like just kind of submit and let the Lord do it, and he'll work it in you. In everything, give thanks. You've got to have thanksgiving, quench not the Spirit. Um, we know we can grieve the Holy Spirit when we sin. He can never leave us like the Holy Spirit could in the Old Covenant. He could leave. He, leave King, he left King Saul, and then an evil spirit came. But now, since we are sealed with the Holy Spirit, this should give us a different relationship with sin, knowing the Holy Spirit is seated in us. The, the triune Godhead is seated in us. So God has a front row seat to our life. Don't sin. Don't don't show him that, right? Don't don't sin. Even within your heart, your will, your desires, you got to make sure you're focused on holy things so that in your heart you're not even harboring and, and stirring up and leaning towards unholy things. Uh, what else can I quick comment on? Abstain from all appearance of evil. So you might not be sinning, but are you are you skirting the line? Are you um, getting too close to things that could lead you to sin? Is there something on TV that could lead you to, you know, overindulging in food? Something, you know, old habit? Or, uh, you know, there might be somebody in there who uh, you find attractive or something, and it can just lead your heart and your 
mind to thinking sinfully. So um, every, any appearance, right? You guys know what I'm saying there. <clears throat> and the very God of peace sanctify you holy. See, the Lord does this for us. We just need to learn to kind of um, like just submit to the work he's doing. And faithful is he that calleth you. He'll also do it. There we go. But the Holy Spirit does this work, right? We don't have to white knuckle it. His burden is light. Uh, the yoke is easy. It is this submission, this giving over, this saying, Lord, I give you my everything. Okay? That's about it for this uh, that I wanted to comment on. But yeah, that's 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 28. So guys, hope this blessed you. Appreciate you watching my video. Please quick hit the thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and please share this video. I will see you next time, guys. God bless you.